What's up guys, Dr. Shepard here, and today we are gonna talk about 20 of the most common and maybe a little bit surprising physical symptoms of anxiety. I'm a psychiatrist and psychotherapist, and unfortunately I've also suffered from anxiety too, so I am very well acquainted with some of these physical symptoms. And a lot of people think that anxiety is all in our heads, that it's just worry and doesn't necessarily have an effect on our bodies. And yeah, that can be true in some cases and the worry can be a really big piece of things, but the physical symptoms can also be significant. And I think people sometimes underestimate how significant the physical symptoms can be. So as always, this is not medical advice. This is just meant for educational purposes and hopefully it'll help you start a conversation with your doctor or your therapist. You can't diagnose someone with anxiety just based off of physical symptoms, but in someone who does have anxiety, it can be really relieving to know that these are some of the physical symptoms that they can suffer from. Most of the physical symptoms that we see with anxiety trace back to changes in our nervous system, specifically changes in the activation of our sympathetic nervous system and the activation of our parasympathetic nervous system. These two sides of our nervous system are typically very delicately balanced. In anxiety disorders though, we see an overactivation or an increase in our sympathetic nervous system. This is also called the fight or flight nervous system. So essentially, when you have an anxiety disorder, your nervous system behaves like you have just encountered a bear, but all the time. And if you were encountering a bear, that would be great. We would want to have our fight or flight nervous system activated and we wouldn't want to be wasting time on our parasympathetic rest and digest response. But again, if it's happening constantly, that's a problem. Physical symptom of anxiety, number one, fatigue and weakness. As you can imagine, this overdrive of your system, this constant activation, this constant feeling hyped up and restless and tense, makes you really tired. You're expending a lot of energy to keep yourself in this fight or flight response, and it's exhausting. This can feel like just run of the mill sleepiness, like you're just not getting enough sleep at night, or it can feel really profound, like you are just plain exhausted. No matter how much sleep you get, how much caffeine you have, you're tired. And some people even feel it in their limbs, like they might feel weaker. Maybe if they're someone who's interested in sports or enjoys weightlifting, for example, they simply cannot lift as much or don't perform as well in their sport. Physical symptom of anxiety number two is muscle tension. Our nervous system is primed and ready for a fight, and that means that we are going to be tense. We are going to have our muscles ready for a fight. Sometimes when we're anxious, we also have problems keeping our posture correct, and we tend to forego things like exercise that we know are gonna be good for us, and those things also tend to help with muscle tension. People with anxiety especially tend to feel this muscle tension and strain in their necks and their backs, and it can be really significant. Physical symptom of anxiety number three, headaches. There are a whole bunch of possible reasons why we develop headaches when we're anxious or stressed. First of all, our bodies release certain chemicals and stress hormones that change the way our blood vessels carry blood to our head. Like I mentioned before, people with anxiety also tend to have tension in their neck and their back, and that can certainly contribute to headaches too. Things like clenching your teeth, not hydrating well, not sleeping well, not getting enough exercise. Of course, all of those things can contribute to headaches and they are much more likely to be seen in someone who is feeling really stressed and anxious and just isn't able to care for themselves like they normally would. Physical symptom of anxiety number four, dry mouth. So I mentioned the parasympathetic nervous system a little bit earlier, and this is the nervous system that's responsible for telling us that it's time to rest and digest. So basically says everything's chill, we're cool, you can just eat something, take a breather, take a nap if you need to. One really important part of digestion that is mediated by the parasympathetic nervous system is the production of saliva. Saliva helps us break down our food and it moistens it so that we can swallow it more easily. So like I also mentioned earlier, when we are stressed or anxious, we tend to deactivate that parasympathetic nervous system, meaning we tell our body, look, Sorry, not time to rest and digest right now. You've got bears to run away from. So since it's not time for us to digest food, there's no need for saliva. Your brain says, hey, 
you're not eating anytime soon, so don't worry about making any saliva. Your mouth gets really dry. Symptom number five is shortness of breath. When we get stressed or anxious, our brains tell our bodies that, hey, you're gonna have to run away, you're gonna have to fight something, like things are really intense right now, you better make sure that you're breathing quickly and getting enough oxygen so that you can do what you need to do to get out of here. When we get stressed or anxious, our brains tell our body, hey, you gotta get ready to run, you need to take in a lot more oxygen to power your muscles so that you have the energy to get out of here or fight or whatever. So in order to meet those potential future demands, we start taking shorter and more shallow breaths. So we start breathing really Really quickly hyperventilating of course that can be a vicious cycle because then you feel like you're breathing faster oh my goodness I have to breathe even faster I'm not getting deep enough breaths and your brain meanwhile is telling you you got to get more oxygen in and it can make you feel really really short of breath and even more stressed physical symptom number six chest pain and chest tightness chest pain is a legit scary symptom of anxiety and it can be really intense it is not at all uncommon for people who are having panic attacks or suffering from just extreme anxiety to end up in the emergency room with chest pain because they think they're having a heart attack. It can be really intense and really uncomfortable. And of course, it's one of those symptoms that you wanna take seriously. You wanna make sure that you've had a doctor check you out, that you get the all clear if this is something you're experiencing, just like with all the other symptoms. But it is possible to have chest pain and chest tightness just from anxiety. And this can be from a couple of different things, but first, First of all, like we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of extra muscle tension when you're anxious and your chest is no exception to that. So you might feel tightness in your chest just from your chest muscles being tense. We also tend to have a faster and more intense heartbeat. We tend to breathe more quickly and all of those things can create physical sensations in our body that are uncomfortable and if we're very anxious and paying a lot of attention to them, they can become downright painful. As I mentioned earlier, we also kind of shut down the parasympathetic nervous system and that affects our digestion. Issues with digestion like heartburn or problems with your esophagus and the way the esophagus moves, all of that stuff can also contribute to a feeling of chest tightness and chest pain. And people with anxiety are more likely to have digestive issues and more likely to have problems with the movement of their esophagus. Physical symptom number seven, memory problems and confusion. This actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. I mean, if you are a parent or just have a day where you're super duper busy and you have a lot of demands coming at you all at once, you start to feel really scatterbrained, right? And it's hard to listen to the kids yelling at you about this thing, pay attention to this bill that you just got in the mail, your phone's going off, you have this deadline at work, you get stressed and you can't pay attention to everything at once. So even if you just have anxiety that isn't caused by this sort of external stress, you can still have that same reaction. When you're anxious, your brain is constantly scanning the environment for threats. It's scanning your internal world. It's trying to figure out if you're safe or not. And it's trying to keep track of a million different things at the same time. That's a lot of pressure and it causes you to feel really easily distracted. When you're distracted and stressed and constantly on the lookout like that, you are going to forget things. You're gonna have trouble taking in and retaining new information and trouble recalling it when you need to recall it. So all of this can add up to make for some serious memory problems and significant confusion. It's also not uncommon for me to see people who think they're developing Alzheimer's disease or some other form of dementia because the, because the memory problems can be that bad. Physical symptom number eight, fast heartbeat, irregular heartbeat, or just feeling like your heart is pounding. So again, we alluded to this a little bit earlier, but when we are anxious and our sympathetic nervous system is going into overdrive, it tells our heart to pump blood faster and pump it tells our heart to pump more blood to our muscles so that they can get enough oxygen to fight or run away or whatever they need to do to take care of the threat. This is a combination of stress hormones and adrenaline, and it can really leave you feeling like your heart is going a million miles an hour. Some people also feel like funny flutters in their chest when they're really anxious. I kind of think of it like feeling a fish flopping around in your chest. Kind of a gross idea, but 
It definitely feels like that. Again, this is one of those things like chest pain, you don't wanna mess around with heart stuff. So it's really important that your doctor checks this out, make sure that it's not due to something else because heart problems can cause these symptoms too. But it is possible to not have anything wrong with your heart at all and still have these really uncomfortable sensations when you're feeling very anxious. Physical symptom number nine, nausea, vomiting, stomach discomfort, blech. General GI, blech. So like we discussed earlier, when we're super anxious, our sympathetic nervous system starts to take over and our parasympathetic nervous system starts to take a step back. Our brains tell our bodies, hey, time to run, time to fight, we're not eating right now. We can't do this right now. So our brain starts to shunt blood away from our digestive system and focuses it into our muscles, our lungs, our heart, the things that we need to fight or flight. When we have this decreased blood flow to our digestive system, our digestive system starts to slow down and that can cause some GI discomfort, GI problems like nausea, like vomiting, like heartburn, all of that and just general discomfort. Like I mentioned earlier, anxiety also puts us at higher risk for certain problems with our esophagus and with our stomachs. Obviously those things can also contribute to GI issues. Number 10, diarrhea. Diarrhea gets its own special category, not because it's necessarily all that special to me, I separated it from the other GI issues that we just talked about because the mechanism is a little bit different and it seems a little bit weird. You would think if our parasympathetic nervous system is taking a step back and our digestion is slower, why are we pooping more? You would think, well, you just wouldn't poop, right? Like you don't wanna be running away from a bear and pooping all over the place. <laughs> Not ideal, um, but we kind of do. And the reason for this is because the large intestine or the colon is the exception to the rule that digestion slows down. The release of these certain stress hormones and our sympathetic nervous system activation tells our large intestine, hey, you might need to run away. We need you to be light, fast, quick on your feet. How about you go ahead and get rid of everything you've been carrying around with you so that we don't have to drag it along with us. Our brains are basically like, you're probably not gonna need this poop in a fight, so how about you leave it here? Leave it at home and then run. I guess it just didn't take into account the modern problem of like, I don't know, cleanliness. Can't just like poop behind a bush and run. <laughs> Anyways, so you poop when you're anxious. And aside from that, people with anxiety are also at higher risk of things that make you go poop, uh, illnesses that make you poop. So things like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, for example. Physical symptom number 11, shaking, tremors, and twitches. So think back to like the last time that you did something really scary or really intense. If you have had a baby before, think back to after you gave birth you were probably very shaky. And maybe you were a little bit cold, I don't know, but that's not the main reason. We shake like that because of this incredible release of adrenaline. Along with other stress hormones, this adrenaline tells our muscles, hey, we're getting ready for a fight, like something big is going down. And all of this extra energy gets pushed to our muscles and kind of comes out in the form of shaking and tremors. I just think of it as like this huge surge of energy that's rushing through you and there's like nowhere for it to go. So you start to shake. Physical symptom of anxiety number 12, sweating, flushing, changes in temperature like hot flashes and cold chills. Again, we're getting ready for a fight. So there are gonna be changes in blood flow that increase blood flow to certain areas of the body that cause us to feel hotter, to maybe start to flush, to start to overheat and sweat. And then once we get overheated like that, our brain says, whoa, things are getting too hot. We need to dampen it down. Let's start sweating a little bit. When you're anxious and you don't get a lot of relief from that anxiety, those two competing things and those fluctuations in temperature can happen really quickly. So you might find yourself feeling hot flashes in one moment and cold chills in another. Your body's basically just trying to regulate temperature but trying to prepare for a fight at the same time and it's overshooting in both directions. Physical symptom number 13, urge to pee. I think of this a lot like the 
urge to poop that we talked about earlier. Your body is trying to get rid of all the extra stuff. There is some research suggesting that our kidneys actually produce more urine when we're feeling anxious, but the biggest reason that we have to pee more often and more urgently when we're feeling anxious is probably because of the way our bladder contracts. Stress hormones that are released when we're anxious cause the bladder to squeeze down in a different way than it normally would, and this makes it feel like we have to pee. Sometimes when people are really startled, really scared, they can even completely lose bladder control because of this reaction. Physical symptom number 14, tingling and numbness. Earlier we mentioned this shortness of breath that we tend to feel when we're anxious and that can lead us to hyperventilate. When we hyperventilate, we release a lot of carbon dioxide, more carbon dioxide than we normally do. And you might think of carbon dioxide as a bad thing and think that we don't need it in our body, but we actually do need a certain amount of carbon dioxide for our bodies to function properly. When we hyperventilate, we breathe off so much carbon dioxide that it causes changes in the pH of our blood. These changes in pH then lead to changes in certain electrolytes like calcium and potassium and changes in the way our blood vessels are functioning. As we mentioned earlier, there are also changes in the way that our blood vessels function just because of the stress hormones. So all of these changes can come together to constrict the blood vessels that lead to your extremities, like your fingers, your toes, your lips, and that can reduce the blood flow that they're getting, causing them to feel cold or clammy or tingly or even numb and of course that freaks you out even more you hyperventilate more and they get even more tingly and numb it's kind of the case with a lot of this stuff it's really a vicious cycle sometimes Physical symptom of anxiety number 15, dizziness. This is another one that's often related to hyperventilation when you're feeling anxious or stressed. Even if you just breathe a little bit faster, it does change the way that your blood vessels carry blood to your brain. And when the blood flow decreases to your brain, you get dizzy or lightheaded. We also tend to focus more on very subtle sensations when we're feeling anxious or stressed. So you might turn your head and notice a very slight wave of dizziness that maybe you wouldn't normally notice and that can make you more anxious. Physical symptom of anxiety number 16, acne and blemishes. There are probably a couple different ways that anxiety and stress can contribute to worsening of acne and worsening of just skin problems in general. And first is probably stress hormones. When we produce more stress hormones, we are more likely to have problems with our skin. We also tend to sweat more when we're anxious and people that are anxious can get very fidgety and touch their faces more. They might also be more likely to pick at their face and pick at blemishes that maybe wouldn't be a problem otherwise. All of this stuff comes together and can really cause some problems with your skin. Number 17, blurry vision and tunnel vision. This is probably related to hyperventilation, again, like the dizziness feeling, but it's also probably related to the fact that when our sympathetic nervous system takes over, our brain tries to focus us in on the immediate threat, the immediate danger that's right in front of us. So if you are, again, trying to run away from a bear, you wanna focus on your escape route. You don't wanna be distracted by things going on around you. So your vision is gonna tunnel in on what's right in front of you. Basically, you pay less attention to what's in your peripheral vision. When we get scared or anxious, we also tend to have our pupils dilate. And when our pupils dilate, we get a lot more light coming in. This in general is meant to help us see better so that we can escape whatever we need to run from or so we can fight whatever we need to fight. But sometimes all of this extra light coming in can actually overwhelm our vision and cause it to feel blurry. Physical symptom of anxiety number 18, feeling of throat tightness, choking, or feeling like your throat is gonna close or like it has a lump in it. This can be another really, really scary sensation. It really feels like you're choking or like you can't get enough air in. It feels like your throat is physically tighter. And for some people, it gets to the point where they can't eat or drink because they're so afraid of the tightness and these uncomfortable sensations in their throat. This is something that we see in anxiety in part because of the dry mouth sensation that we talked about earlier, just having dry mouth can make your throat feel like there's a lump in it. We also tend to get really tight in our necks and our throats as well when we're feeling stressed or anxious. So these muscles that run from the bottom of your face down to your chest 
can get really tight too, and that can make you feel like your throat is closing. We also talked about how muscle tightness plays a role in a lot of the physical symptoms of anxiety, and throat tightness can be related to muscle tightness in general as well. So these muscles that run down the front of your throat can get really tight and can just feel like they're squeezing your throat. We also talked earlier about how anxiety can impact your GI system, and things like heartburn or esophagus spasm that are more likely in people with anxiety or people who are under a lot of stress, those things can actually cause a sensation of throat tightness. Physical symptom number 19, yawning. We don't know exactly why this symptom happens, but it could be related again to hyperventilation. Yawning is something that some researchers believe is related to changes in the blood levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide. There are also other theories that have talked about yawning as a way to cool your body down down when you're overheated. So if we tend to overheat when we're anxious, we might yawn to compensate for that. And last but not least, physical symptom of anxiety number 20, insomnia. Problems sleeping are so common in anxiety. In fact, it's one of the symptoms that leads people into treatment. Oftentimes, if you just have generalized anxiety disorder, you may not be particularly concerned about your worry or your anxiety. Many of us feel like it's just part of our personality and we have no choice but to worry all the time. But for many people, that will progress to a point where they can't sleep anymore because they're so anxious and so stressed about things. They just can't turn their mind off. They can't stop those worries when it's finally time to get some sleep. Thankfully, this, along with all of the other symptoms that I just talked about, are things that get better as the anxiety gets better. We use a bunch of different methods to treat anxiety depending on what the cause is, how severe the anxiety is, and what the person that we're treating prefers. So we can use things like therapy, different medications, different lifestyle changes, but the same approach may not work for everyone. So sometimes we have to try a couple of different things before the anxiety gets better. If you already subscribe to my channel or you follow me on my other social media platforms, you probably know that I talk a lot about these other treatments for anxiety as well as things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life to help your anxiety. If you want to learn more, check out the playlist on anxiety. I also have an anxiety boot camp course that can be really, really helpful. It's basically all the things that I teach people to help with their anxiety all in one place. And you can also check out the resources section of my website for more information on books that I've used that I find really helpful for anxiety. So if you like this video, give it a like, hit subscribe if you aren't already, and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear more about how you manage the physical symptoms of your anxiety. Big shout out to those who have subscribed to my Patreon this month. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for being part of this and allowing me to continue producing producing free educational content like this. I appreciate you guys so much. If you guys like my content and want more exclusive stuff, head over to the Patreon. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.